Lord, the, the life that you give to us. Um, Father, thank you for these, this day that you've blessed us with, Lord. Father, I thank you for, um, for my brother, Lord, and just thank you for um, the life that you've, you've given to him, Lord. Thank you for the years that we've all got to spend with him, Lord. Um, thank you for bringing um, Zane over all the way from the other side of the world, Lord. Lord, I thank you for, um, Lord, just all that you've brought him through, Lord, to get him here, Lord, and just, um, Lord, the man that you've been creating him to be. Lord, the man that he is now, um, Lord, and are we just all thankful for, um, we're thankful for my brother, Lord, we're thankful for, uh, for his life, uh, for his testimony, um, for his spirit, Lord, for his, his character, his personality, Lord. Um, Father, we thank you for all these things, Lord, and um, I just pray that you would um, strengthen, um, strengthen him now in this time, Father, um, give him just strength to be at ease and be calm, Lord, and and just enjoy, um, enjoy this wonderful gift of, of marriage, of companionship, Lord. Kayla's older sister, but just barely. Um, <laughs> so I've known Kayla obviously her whole life. She is. No sorry. <laughs> She's a lot of things, but the most important thing about her is she is vibrant and kind and intelligent. Kayla and I, uh, we're less than a year apart in age. And as you can imagine, um, Though we are very close, and we're very different, being so close in age, <laughs> we also had our share of, uh, you know, competitions and struggles when we were younger. We, um, most of the time, we're not Megan or Kayla. We were Megan and Kayla, and um, we wore the same clothes. We shared the same room. We had all the same friends. And there was a time in my life when I was very young and I was trying to find out who I was and I thought, oh, I'm my own person, you know, and she's her own person.
Would you please join me in prayer as we ask the Lord's blessing on this ceremony? Father, what a wonderful opportunity we have here today to see an expression of how your love has affected these two young lives before us. In your sovereign goodness, you long ago have planned it all, and it is certainly a joy to witness it here today. As we go forward with this ceremony, we ask that your Son, Christ, be glorified in it all. Teach us from your word what marriage is, what it means, and plant these truths deep within the heart of Zane and Kayla. Father, we entrust this time to you, and we ask that your blessing be upon everything that we do. May the covenant that is made here today be pleasing in your sight. Amen. Please remain standing as we begin our time together in song. seated. 
On behalf of Zane and Kayla and their families, I would like to welcome you all to this very special occasion. Kayla, you look beautiful. Zane, thank you for not marching down in a Darth Vader outfit. <laughs> we appreciate that. We've all gathered here today in support of you two to celebrate your decision to marry one another. I know I speak for everyone that is in attendance. It is certainly an honor and a joy, a privilege to be here with you today. Kayla, it's been a joy to know you over the past few years and to get to know you and to see your sincere love for the Lord and for others. You've certainly been a blessing to me, my family, and our church. Kayla, I know that uh, many have prayed for you throughout your life. They've prayed for your salvation, and the Lord has answered those prayers. They've prayed that you would grow in your love for Jesus Christ and others, and the Lord has answered those prayers. They have prayed that he would bring into your life a young man who would love, protect, and cherish you for the rest of your life. And today is evidence that he has also answered those prayers, as the Lord is giving you Zane to be your husband. In Proverbs 30, verses 18 through 19, we read this. Three things are too wonderful for me, for I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the sky, the way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a ship on the high seas, and the way of a man with his fiance, or a rough translation would be the way that he looks towards the one he's about to marry. Kayla, one thing is clear from the way Zane looks at you and is looking at you right now, and that is today you are receiving the gift of a man who loves you. Cherish the gift as the gift is given from the Lord. And Zane, it has certainly been a privilege to know you and to walk beside you over these past four or five years as a brother in Christ and a friend. The Lord has grown you just as he has promised, and certainly he will continue to grow you and to keep you as you take on this new responsibility. Just as many have prayed for Kayla, so also many have prayed for you. And what matters here today is that the Lord is answering one of those prayers by giving you a wife by giving you Kayla to be your wife. In Proverbs 19, 14, we read that house and wealth are inherited from fathers, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. And today you also are receiving a true gift from the Lord. Treasure her always as a gift. Zane and Kayla, soon you two will publicly pledge your love to one another in making a solemn covenant before the Lord. It will be a promise that will change your life forever. Marriage is certainly one of the most personally fulfilling and life-altering experiences of this life. This new union will influence everything about your life. It will affect decisions, thinking, your character. Zane, it will majorly affect your finances as well. I'm just kidding. But it will change almost everything. And so you've been preparing for some of these changes through premarital counseling. And so what I would like to do now is to remind you of some of the truths that you have learned in your time through premarital counseling so that you might remember these truths always and glorify God in your marriage. I want you to remember and to know that marriage was created by God. Before the creation of Eve, while Adam was still alone with the animals in the garden, we read in Genesis 2.18 that the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. And of course, the Lord does this. And so we read in Genesis 2:21 that the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the Lord took that rib and he used it to create Eve. And then he brought her to Adam and he woke him up. And upon waking and seeing Eve, Adam breaks out in poetry. The man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Really deep stuff right there, right? Zane, I believe you also have a poem to share with us right now. I forgot. You forgot it? Okay, it's okay. We'll, we'll keep moving on. He's going to share it later. After Adam's poem, the Lord then presided over the first marriage. We read in Genesis 2.24, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And so we see that marriage is not the invention of man, but God. In the beginning, God created the man and the woman. And then he also created marriage, that they might be joined together. And he called all of this good. 
You see, God loves to create good things that are different but still complement one another. The heavens and the earth, the sea and the land, the day and the night, the vegetation and the land animals, and of course, the man and the woman. To be more specific, Zane and Kayla. You are very different, but God has made you like this that you might help one another and complement one another. That you might use these differences to love and to serve one another always and to glorify God together. So marriage is the creation of God, and you must remember this throughout your marriage. You also must remember that marriage is before God. You need to realize that as you both stand here today to constitute this covenant, that God is looking down upon it all. Psalm 14.2 reminds us that the Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man. And certainly that is the case here today. Zan and Kayla, the promise that you will make here today is before God. And he takes marriage extremely serious. Today's ceremony is not a contract between both of you and the government. Rather, today is a covenant between both of you and God. In Mark 10 and 9, Jesus plainly expresses his Father's will for your marriage. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Just as a nation would be foolish not to guard its most treasured possession, so also you would be foolish not to guard the gift that God is giving you today in marriage. It is to be your most treasured possession that you will receive in this life. So treasure your marriage. Guard it according to God's word by always walking in humble obedience to your heavenly father. Know that he watches over it all. Know that one day you will give an account for the gift that he is giving you here today. It is a gift from God to be stewarded. Steward this gift well. You will make many decisions in life, but none will be as serious as the one that you're making here today. So always remember that. And remember that God, as he stands over you now, is also going to be there to help you throughout your marriage. So turn to him as the one who sees over it all. I would also remind you that your marriage is going to require love. In Ephesians 5.25, husbands are called to love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. In Titus 2.4, wives are called to love their husbands. Zane and Kayla, always remember that the covenant you are making today demands and requires love. And this love is not a worldly love that comes and goes based upon circumstances or feelings or emotions or even the behavior of the other. No, this love is a Christ-like love, which means it is a love that is not based upon the fulfillment of outside conditions. Biblical love is loving action that springs forth from a desire to please Christ. It is as Paul described it in 1 Corinthians 13. It is patient when wronged. It is kind at all times. It's never jealous of what the other has. It's never proud or self-seeking. It is not rude. It is not easily offended. It never keeps a record of wrongs, but always forgives. It grieves over unrighteousness and rejoices when the truth prevails. Paul ends this by saying, love bears all things, it believes all things, it hopes all things, it endures all things. Love never fails. This is Christ-like love, unconditional, unfailing. In Deuteronomy 7, 9, Moses said, Know therefore that the Lord your God is a faithful God who keeps his covenant and his loving kindness with those who love him to a thousand generations. The idea is that that love continues forever. Psalm 36, 5, again, we have this. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. All of this to say there is no end to God's love. It goes on forever. And this is the kind of love that God desires between a husband and a wife. Love each other like this and your marriage will not fail because love never fails. Always remember that your marriage must be full of Christ-like love. Also, I want you to know that marriage requires much humility. Marriage requires humility and sacrifice, and that is because it is a promise to surrender your very life every day for the sake of your spouse. 
Zane, we read it earlier, but your call is to love Kayla just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And this kind of love requires an incredible amount of humility, a Christ-like humility. Best described in Philippians 2 by Paul, he writes, Do nothing from selfish ambition or vainglory, but with humility of mind. Regard one another as more important than yourself. Not merely looking out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. Have this way of thinking in yourselves, which is also in Christ Jesus. This is your call. And it will require an incredible amount of humility, of self-emptying and giving. And yet, here's a truth that you must keep in mind. Acts 20, 35. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus, Luke wrote, that he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The humble carry that promise with them always, and so I would exhort you both to do the same. It is a promise, and it will come true if you live it out. The proud serve themselves and are never satisfied, but the humble, they are content to serve everyone else but themselves because they know that God will truly satisfy the humble. The responsibilities of marriage are not easy, but if you will clothe yourself with humility, the burden will be light and it will also be full of joy. So remember, your marriage demands humility. Last, I want you to know that marriage illustrates the gospel. Today, you are doing something completely new. Right now, you are two, but soon you will become one. We've already read it, Genesis 2, 24, that you will hold fast to your wife and become one with her. This is the unseen reality of marriage, a true reality of marriage, the two becoming one person. And because of the covenant you are making here today, the old single life you have known apart from one another is over. Praise the Lord, right? <laughs> today you began a new one, one united to each other so that everything you are now is becoming one. One name, one home, one bank account, one purpose, one bed, one pillow. No, I'm just kidding. You can have two <laughs> pillows. It'll be fine. You are two now, but now you're becoming one. In all of this, we have a beautiful illustration of the gospel. In this one flesh union of marriage, Paul says, refers to Christ and the church. So today you are starting something completely new, but also the moment a person gives their life to Jesus Christ, they also start something completely new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And the reason a person becomes completely new is because the moment they place their faith in Christ, they become one with him, one with Christ. What is his is yours. His righteousness is yours. His death, which perfectly paid for sin, is yours. His exaltation is yours. His inheritance is yours. And the reason is because God has promised to his son that all who turn to him in faith and repentance will become one with him and thus be saved. Zane and Kayla, your marriage is a perfect illustration of this. And so from this day forward, God expects you to embrace this reality of your oneness, knowing that this reflects the amazing reality that Christ is also one with his bride, the church. In Romans 8, 35, Paul asks this question, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And the answer is nothing. And so it ought to be with your marriage, for again, your marriage is an illustration of Christ's union for all who call upon him for salvation, and nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Zane, you've already seen some of the responsibilities you have for Kayla. You are to have a sacrificial kind of love for her, and this is an illustration of Christ's love for his church. You are to nourish her, to cherish her, just as Christ has done for you. You are to seek always to present her to Christ, your Savior, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, no blemish, holy before him, as Paul writes in Ephesians. In doing this, the world, the church, everyone around you will see an illustration of Christ's love. Kayla, you are called to humbly submit to Zane and to respect him. Ephesians 5.22 says, Submit to your husband as to the Lord. 
And Ephesians 5.33 would call you to respect Zane. Here we have another illustration of the gospel because God's people have certainly submitted themselves to Christ. Now this posture of submission can be scary. It certainly puts you in a vulnerable place. But the Lord is perfect, and so is his word. And so we remember that whatever he calls you to is best. Zane will make a few mistakes along the way, but God never makes a mistake. So humbly submit yourself to Zane as an act of love for the Lord. Trust in your Savior, and in doing so, you will find a kind of peace and strength that only he can give. And Zane, you ought to be extremely humbled by this. For this only works if you are first submitted to Christ. This being the case, your posture towards Caleb will not be as a king demanding submission for your own benefit, but rather as a servant king who sees submission not only as a great responsibility, but a great responsibility that is meant for her good and to serve her just as Christ does the church. You sacrifice your life for her so that she desires to submit to you as submitting to Christ. All of this points to Jesus. Your marriage from start to finish is an illustration of his love of the gospel. And so let me make it clear what the gospel is. It is good news. And the good news is only good news because there is bad news. And the bad news is this, Romans 3.23, we have all sinned, every single one of us, and fallen short of the glory of God. Today, two sinners will come together in marriage, but there can be no union between a perfect God and a sinner like us. And this is why Christ came. 2 Corinthians 5.21 provides a clear explanation of the gospel. For our sake, he made him, that is Christ, to be sin, who knew no sin, he was perfect, so that in him, in Christ, we might become the righteousness of God. This is how a sinner such as us can be united to God. We must repent of our sin and believe upon Christ's sacrifice. And in doing this, we will not only be forgiven, but we will be covered in his righteousness, therefore accepted by the Father, unified with him. And this is offered to everyone freely here today. If you call out to him and trust in Christ alone, you also can be made one with Jesus Christ. And so I would encourage you all as we go throughout the rest of the ceremony to keep these truths in mind, for this is what God wants us to see as Zane and Kayla come together here today. So Zane, Kayla, we are now coming to the time when you will both be joined together as one. As you speak these vows today, may you do so with an awareness of what you have just learned that you might every day provide an illustration of the gospel to those around you. So now understanding the seriousness of the covenant that lies before you, please turn to one another in preparation for your vows. Zane, will you repeat after me? I, Zane, take you, Kayla, to be my wife. I, Zane, take my beautiful Kayla to be my wife. Well, you changed the words there. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That was perfect. That was perfect. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Or until our Lord and Savior returns. Until our Lord and Savior returns. And Zane, will you have Kayla to be your wife, and will you pledge yourself to her in all love and honor and all duty and service, in all faith and tenderness, to live with her and cherish her for all your days on earth, according to the ordinance of God and the holy bond of marriage? Of course, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla, will you repeat after me? I, Kayla, take you, Zane, to be my husband. I, Kayla, take you, Zane, to be my husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Or until our Lord and Savior returns. Or until our Lord and Savior returns. And Kayla, will you have Zane to be your husband and will you pledge yourself to him in all love and honor? 
in all duty and service, in all faith and tenderness, to live with him and cherish him for all your days on earth, according to the ordinance of God in the holy bond of marriage. I will. I do. <laughs> I would have accepted I will. <laughs> May we have the rings, please. Which one do I pick? Oh. You take mine. Okay. Zane, may this band that has no beginning nor end be an enduring symbol of your devotion to Christ and to Kayla, your bride. You may place the ring on her finger. Oh, which finger? Oh. Yeah. Okay. And Kayla, may this band that has no beginning nor end be an enduring symbol of your devotion to Christ and to Zane, your husband. You may place the ring on his finger. Praise the Lord. Would you all join me as we ask the Lord to bless this new couple? Father, may you from this moment on guide, protect, and bless Zane and Kayla as they begin this new life as one. Write these vows permanently upon their hearts. Cause their love to grow for one another as their love continues to grow for you. Keep their hearts tender for one another. And give them the strength to forgive any offense that comes. Help them for as long as they both shall live to steward rightly and enjoy fully the gift that you are giving them here today. Enable them by your grace and your power to keep the promises that they have made before you today. Help them, Father, to keep these promises. And may their marriage be a testimony of the gospel for all who are around them to see. We ask all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Zane and Kayla, in the vows that you have taken today, you have affirmed your commitment to one another before God and all of these witnesses. Now, by virtue of the authority entrusted to me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I now pronounce you husband and wife, no longer two, but one. Zane, you may kiss your bride. <laughs> What it's worth, I've never seen a crowd cheer so much. So. <laughs> a lot of Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Zayn Majid.
Others as Mr. Majid. One person calls him by something more tender that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mention it. He doesn't want me to mention it. That's his mom, what his mom calls him. Uh, some some people call him density. And if you've ever seen him tackle anybody or hit a volleyball, you'd understand why. Uh, he doesn't have to hit it hard, it just flies anyways. So does the person. Um, some of him some of us know him as, mainly me, but Pepe, Pepecito. Uh, some of us know him his, uh, as son or son from Lebanon. Um, one person knows him as babe now, or something else similar. Uh, but what I want to speak shortly on is what do I know Zane as? Who is Zane to me? If I could have one name for Zane, what would that be? And that would be Brother. What I gained years ago um, when this 18-year-old guy came walking down from the San Antonio airport, all the way from the other side of the world, um, the main thing I got was a brother. Um, and not, not just a friend, not a friend that sticks closer than a brother, even, but, but an actual brother. And, and to prove that, here's a, here's a little snapshot of things that Zane and I have done together. One of the first things that we did together was we worked out a lot. And every time we work out, we pray beforehand so that he wouldn't hurt himself, I wouldn't hurt myself. And we also have just a good mind. Um, we became amateur breakdancers. His favorite breakdancing song is Dancing Queen. Yeah. It was really good. Uh, we've eaten food from all over the world. He's a world traveler. We've gone on a cruise to Mexico together. Traveled to Cali together. Uh, we've even flown all the way to the motherland, Lebanon, together. Uh, we scaled a mountain. I don't think it was Mount Lebanon, but we scaled a mountain. We left our mark there. Um, Zane was a brother I've never had. And Kayla, now you get to enjoy making memories with this gentle bear. 
Um, and as you spend more time with him, you're going to find that Zane is a man of God. Um, God, he, he loves God, he's the God who saved him, and demonstrates it by his life, through the accountability he has with older men, um, in his lifestyle. Um, he's crazy, he's wild, he's untamed, although you tame him well. You, you seem to do that pretty well. He's, uh, he's generous. I've never seen a man give like Lane Dillith at such a young age. I mean, he, he, he honestly does care. Um, he has a lot of thoughtfulness for people around him. Um, he's dangerous, but he's also kind. And anyone who would dare hurt anyone uh, he loves would know like, the fierceness that, that Zane can have. Um, so Zane, you're my brother. I love you. I love you deeply, bro. Um, I'm thankful for God bringing you into my life. And I couldn't have asked for, for a better gift than a brother from the other side of the world to come and step into my life and change me in a lot of ways. And give me many and many experiences. And get to do so many things. I'm still excited to do all those things. And Caleb, I know that you're going to be able to do those things with me. Um, so the last thing I want to do is just bless you guys. Um, with uh, Aaron's blessing towards the people of Israel. Um, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Cheers to and I, uh, we're less than a year apart in age. And as you can imagine, um, though we are very close and we're very different, being so close in age, <laughs> we also had our share of, uh, you know, competitions and struggles when we were younger. We, um, most of the time, we're not Megan or Kayla. We were Megan and Kayla. And um, we wore the same clothes. We shared the same room. We had all the same friends. And there was a time in my life when I was very young and I was trying to find out who I was. And I thought, oh. I'm my own person, you know? And she's her own person. And as you can imagine, there were some very curious incidents that occurred because of that. In fact, at one point, <laughs> my mom became so tired of our constant bickering that she actually had to hang a curtain from one side of the room to the other just to keep us apart. <laughs> The unfortunate thing about that is that even though we had a curtain down the corner, you know, the center of the room, the doorway was in her territory and the closet was in mine. So <laughs> the border disputes continued. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's so funny looking back because when you're young, sometimes you don't take things, um, you don't appreciate them quite the way that you should. And I remember as much as I loved my sister, we were both so different and we really struggled to find... Uh, a balance, I think, in our relationship. And in fact, a perfect example of just how different we were is one of Kayla's best qualities is that she's kind. And uh, <laughs> Kayla and I, the oldest in a family of five, sometimes we would babysit our little brother and little sisters. <laughs> and I already know where I'm going with this. And Kayla and I had a never-ending struggle between enforcing the law and showing compassion. And Kayla was always the one who showed compassion. Yeah. Kayla, um, I admire you in so many ways. And I'm grateful that as the years have gone on, I've been able to see all the ways that you've made me better and see all of your wonderful strengths and realize that you are exactly the person you are always supposed to be. And now let's talk about Zane. <laughs> the first time I met Zane was at a family Christmas. And he seemed to be bold. He joked around with everybody, was not bashful or shy about anything. He was fun, but he also seemed caring. And um, he just seemed like just a natural part of our family. However, at the time, Kayla insisted, oh, Zane and I are just friends. <laughs> but what I noticed was when Kayla spoke, Zane seemed to listen intently. And when Zane spoke, Kayla listened intently. And I thought it was so obvious as an outsider that they were not going to be friends. You two loved each other and you were meant to be together. 
So today, I'm very happy to say I called it. <laughs> and I just can't imagine a better pairing. Um, the two of you are going to have a wonderful life together. But I just want to leave you with a couple important things because even the best people will have struggles sometimes. Never forget that aside from God, you too are now each other's most important person in all situations. Always love each other, even when you're upset. Always respect each other, even when you think the other one is wrong. Because until the end of your lives, you are each other's rock right now. To Zane and Kayla, I wish you the best. Well, you've already heard from my son. Uh, now, this is my... Uh, this is from a father. Um, I remember when uh, we first heard of Zane, uh, we were in a Sunday school class and Art came to us and he announced that there was this 18 year old guy in Lebanon, but he was an American citizen. So as soon as he turned 18, he, he was gonna be kicked out of Lebanon and he had nowhere to go. And, uh, my wife said, let's help him. So uh, he ended up coming, we ended up accepting him into our house. And uh, Matthew 25, 35, it says, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. But to be honest, we were the ones that received the, the blessings. And uh, Zane, in his outgoingness and openness, he wasn't a stranger very long. Zane, I, we couldn't believe the, the story that he had being raised by a single mother. Uh, but in Proverbs 22, 6 tells us, raise a child and the way he should go and the end will not depart from. And uh, Zane's mom, Nazira, trusted in the good father and brought him up well because it shows in his character. We never had an issue with him. Anything we asked him to do, he accomplished and he did it. He was always ready to go out and share the Lord and with strangers, anybody on the street. He was very open and giving to all those as my son. Uh, the Lord makes from our steps one delights in him, Psalms 37 to 23. RL, our son, and Zane kid around much, as you can imagine, besides bending the living room sofa bars and wrestling off, and they have little saying, we're brothers from another mother. <laughs> he was... Uh, a little brother R.L. never had. He has been encouraging to see Zane mature and do so many different areas. He has grown up fast, and the good father has proven himself faithful in his testimony. Zane has been a beautiful addition to our family. So with this, I close, and we welcome to the family, Kayla. I'm really just up here to say thank you to everybody that has helped. I, it, your church is amazing. You guys have just anything that Zane and Kayla needed. Everybody's jumped in and taken care of. And you've made it all so easy and so beautiful. And just everything from even before the ceremony, the bridal shower, everything, um, the reception, the rehearsal dinner, everything's just been wonderful. And you guys have loved them so well and i'm really appreciative of that i'm i'm very grateful that they have a church family that loves them so deeply and that i know will be a guiding force and a supporting force as you learn to be husband and wife and to have a marriage that honors the lord um and uh so i'm just really grateful we're very grateful and i know that they love you as much as you guys obviously love them and um, all, the only other thing I want to say is 
I'm just really grateful you're my son now. And I'm, I'm thankful for how you love my daughter. <laughs>